we have our five volts, and I'm using red, black for ground, and then yellow into A0. And this is the pin that we're going to have connected to our, um, our, our, our potentiometer, the signal pin on our potentiometer. Okay, and then gotcha. on the other side, we're going to have a wire, I'm using orange, plugged into pin three, and that's going to be our pin that we're using to output, output our pulse width modulation signal to our LED. Okay. All right, and so now I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm going to um, connect my positive and ground, my five volts and my ground into the power and ground rails on my breadboard. So now that I have my power and ground rail set up, now I'm going to put my potentiometer back into play. And so the potentiometer, if we look at it closely, right, we have um, three connections on there, three legs on the potentiometer. I think it's easiest to put it um, bridging over that central uh, channel on the breadboard. Um, but the main thing we want to keep track of is just making sure that none of those um, connectors on the potentiometer are in the same numbered row because we need all of them to be electrically isolated, not shorted out on the breadboard. And it can take a little bit of force to get it to go in to the breadboard, um, but just be careful not to mangle it when you're jamming it into the, um, the holes on the breadboard. And so um, there's three, three leads. The one, um, there's two that are on one side, right? And then one that's all by itself. Yeah. That one that's all by itself is our signal pin, and that we're going to connect to our wire that is plugged into A0. And so now, on this side that has the other two leads, mm -hmm. those are going to be connected. One will be connected to our power, and one will be connected to ground. And, okay. um, and you can, it doesn't really matter which one is which. Um, it's just going to determine. Uh, if we turn it one way, we'll get low numbers, and one way we'll get high numbers. And if we switch those two, it'll just be the opposite relationship um, between that, which maybe I'll show that in a minute. But so I'm just gonna choose one and connect it to power. And the other one connected to ground. And so now our potentiometer is all good. Now what we need to do is wire up our LED. So what we're gonna do, remember we have our LED and we have it bent so that our long leg of our LED is coming out. Um, and that is our positive lead. That's the one we're going to be connecting to our positive voltage. And the other one will be connected to our ground. I'm going to plug this in to my breadboard once again so that those two leads are not in the same numbered row. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that 220 ohm resistor we can see here um, one leg of the 220 ohm resistor is in the same numbered row as our positive lead for our LED the purpose of this 220 ohm resistor remember is um, to limit the current that can flow through this LED because the LED has the interesting property of uh, when, when current flows through it, its resistance plummets, and then that makes its current increase, and it can burn out the LED pretty easily. Um, so this is just um, to keep that LED from pulling too much power. Now, we're going to um, connect our LED up. The ground side, I'm gonna connect a wire two, and I'm going to connect that to the ground rail on the breadboard. And then after that, the last thing that we need to do is plug our wire that we have into pin three into the row that has our resistor in it. And then bingo, bongo, we got an LED. Now that we have the physical electronics part squared away, hopefully, now we're going to look back and review the code for controlling the brightness of this LED with our potentiometer. Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to need to do 
is we're going to need to um, declare some global variables. So these variables up top here, um, we're declaring them and we are making them available anywhere within our code. Um, and we can tell that by the fact that they are being declared outside of our void setup and void loop before our, outside of our setup and loop functions. Um, so we have one called pot val and one called led val. And we can note the data type here. These are both being declared as integer variables. So they're gonna be whole numbers. Um, and um, the pot val is going to have a range of 0 through 1023 um, for its options, because that's the, um, the range that happens for an analog read, um, where we're going to be telling, determining the voltage that the potentiometer is allowing to pass through to our, um, to our pin here. So we have our potentiometer, and that is going to be connected to pins A0 and ground and five volts. We're gonna use the, uh, the variable name potval to hold the value, the numerical value that correlates with the voltage that is going through the potentiometer to pin A0. And our LED val integer variable is going to be what we're going to use to um, change the duty cycle of the signal output from pin three to be routed through our LED. And so that range for digital, I mean, sorry, for analog write is zero through 255. So the first things that we need to do is we need to declare our pin modes so that the Arduino knows uh, to be ready to either read a value from those pins or output information. So A0, where our potentiometer is um, connected, is going to be an input into the Arduino. And pin three, which is connected to our LED, is going to be an output from the Arduino. And we're going to um, begin our serial connection with the computer so that we can review um, values of variables that we can print to the serial connection and then read in the serial monitor. And so remember our setup function is going to run one time only. So we only need to, need to declare these pin modes and start our serial connection one time. Um, and then in our loop function, that's what's going to be iterating over and over and over and over. And because we want to get um, updating information on the position of our potentiometer, that is going to be in the loop function. And because we want to have updating um, brightness on our LED, that stuff is also going to be in our loop function. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get data from the potentiometer using analog read. And the syntax for analog read is we'll, um, analog read will return a value and its parameter is the pin that it should be um, looking at to see what the voltage on that pin is. So our potentiometer is in pin A0, or is connected to pin A0 via breadboard and wires. And so that return value, we're going to assign to our variable named potval. And now we need to map that data to a usable range because that um, potval data is going to be in a range of 0 through 1023, which is um, only that first zero through 255 is useful to us. Beyond that is not helpful data. So we need to translate that into the smaller range of zero through 255 that analog write can support. And then we're going to use that value, use that variable's value, and we're going to have the Arduino analog write that value to pin three, to which our LED is connected via the 220 ohm current limiting resistor. And that is that. That's all we need to control this LED.